Hi there, this is Bonnie Way from thekoalamom.com and I'm so happy you're here. In this video, I'll be talking about homeschooling. I've paired up with some other Canadian homeschoolers to chat about the most common questions we get about homeschooling. So when you're done watching my video, you can check out the links to their videos below in the notes. Homeschooling is as different and varied as each family or as different as each public school is from each other. So I hope that these videos and the different ideas and tips that each of us shares will inspire and encourage you as you consider homeschooling or continue your homeschooling journey. Okay, first question. Why did you decide to homeschool? This came partly from my own experience as a homeschool student as a child. I was homeschooled for grades 1 through 12 at home in Alberta before homeschooling was really well known or really common. And that experience showed me the benefits of homeschooling for my own um, educational goals and career goals and just life skills that I was able to learn as a homeschool student. And so as I was thinking about where my kids should go to school as they you know, grew up and got closer to school age, homeschooling seems to be the best choice for them as well. And there are several things that I like about homeschooling and our homeschooling lifestyle. One is flexibility. We can plan homeschooling around other activities and events in our life so that we can travel, for example. One year, my grandfather passed away in early December, and so because we homeschool, we were able to go back to Alberta for his funeral and then visit family for an extended amount of time and keep homeschooling while we were on the road. We have taken breaks at different times than the school year to fit around other events, and there's just the flexibility in the big picture, the big year like that. There's also flexibility in little things like being able to go to the art gallery on a Tuesday when hardly anybody else is there instead of having to go on a weekend when it's super busy. Um, field trips like that, playdates with friends, um, especially if friends come in visiting out of town. Um, we're flexible. We can double up on school or just take a day off school or do school on the weekends if we didn't get it done during the week. Things like that. That flexibility has been great for our family. Homeschooling has also let my children work at their own pace. I have two daughters who are currently working ahead of grade level, and so homeschooling has allowed them to work at their own pace. It's let me provide them with materials that will challenge and keep them interested in learning. And yeah, just keep up with them because they're learning to read very quickly, they're grasping their math quickly, and so I've been just providing them with the material that they need to, to work at the level that they're at. Um, I also have one daughter who struggled for a little bit with reading and so homeschooling let me recognize her struggles and assess where she was at with her reading and adjust our curriculum to meet her needs and so she has now caught up to where she should be for her grade level this year and um, so I just appreciate the one-on-one -on -one time that I have with them because it lets me assess each of them and whether they're working ahead, whether they're working behind, whether they're working at grade level, whether we need to change curriculum because they're not interested in it or because it's not meeting their needs, maybe it's too easy, maybe it's too hard. That one-on-one -on -one attention with my children lets me customize their education to what they need, whether it's catching up, working ahead, you name it. So that has been great for our homeschooling journey so far. Another big factor in our decision to homeschool is our faith. Um, we're Catholics and that's a very important part of our life. So I appreciate being able to homeschool because we can choose uh, faith-filled Catholic curriculum for our children. Um, all of the curriculum that I use, except for math, is from a Catholic publishers, and so everything that the girls are learning, their faith is woven through it. It's not a separate subject, it's not something that we do on weekends, and they don't do it at school at all, it's not something that's just grace before meals, it's part of everything that we do, part of their entire school day. So they're reading stories about other families going to Mass, they're learning about um, Mother Mary and the saints in their language books. And so I just love the way that this is woven through our curriculum. And that Number two, how long do you plan to homeschool for? This is an area where I don't really have a plan. This is something that I assess each and every year, what is best for the children for this year. Uh, it's really up to the kids, I guess, and what I feel is best for them and what they want to do. So I did homeschool all the way through grade 12. I have no problem homeschooling my children through grade 12 if I feel that that is the best option for them and that's what they want to do. This year we are planning to make a slight change in our homeschool plan. My oldest daughter is actually hoping to start um, a Catholic high school for grade 8, and so that's going to be a big change for her, but I can see um, some ways where that's a really good fit for her because she's very social. She responds well to working with peer groups and to having 
friends around her while she's doing school. And there's some opportunities that the high school offers that I can't offer her at home or that would be very expensive to find as community extracurricular activities, such as choir. So that seems like a good option for her this year. My second daughter wants to continue um, full-time homeschooling. She, yeah, she herself has told me why she wants to homeschool and her reasons for that, and I'm happy to support her in doing that. So she might homeschool all the way through grade 12, but this is something that we'll assess each and every year, what's working, what's not working, what's the best option. How much does homeschooling cost? This really depends on where you are and what sort of things you want to do in your homeschool. It's, yeah, homeschooling can be as inexpensive or expensive as you want it to be. So we here in BC receive some funding for our homeschooling that helps pay for most of the girls' books and some of their extracurricular activities, which is super helpful. I do end up paying for some things out of pocket, um, but again, that depends on what curriculum you choose to use. There are options such as getting secondhand curriculum or different curriculum have different um, price tags. Where you order the curriculum affects the cost. What you do for extracurricular activities affects your cost. There are ways to homeschool for a very small amount. If you want to do more of the work in creating the curriculum or planning yourself, I prefer boxed curriculums or open and go curriculums where everything is prepared for me. Those are slightly more expensive. So yeah, the cost of homeschooling really just depends. That's something that if budget is a big issue for you for homeschooling, you'll want to do some research about what's available in your area, what sort of curriculum you like, um, things like that. For us, homeschooling has overall been a very affordable option compared to other schooling options in our area. For example, I mentioned that um, having a Catholic education is very important for me, for my children. Unfortunately, in BC, Catholic schools have a very high tuition, which is not currently affordable for our family. So homeschooling allows me to give them a Catholic education at a much more reasonable price for our family. So there's factors like that that you can compare and look at to decide how much homeschooling costs and whether it fits your family. How much time does homeschooling take? Homeschooling takes much less time than you think it does, probably. I know that we have this idea that school should take from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. because that's what schools take um, in public schools or when kids are in brick and mortar schools. That is not how much time that we spend homeschooling. Even I remember as a child homeschooling growing up, I was I could often be done my schoolwork by noon. Even, you know, shortly after lunch, two o'clock was the latest that we were usually doing schoolwork. And that was even up into my high school years. I had tons of time to hang out with friends or write my novels or pursue other activities. And that has been my same experience in homeschooling my children. I know that um, many moms worry about, you know, how much time do I have to spend with my kids? How am I going to get the housework and other things done? It's completely doable. Right now I have, or this year I've had four kids in school, and so the older two are doing grades six and seven, and they are mostly independent. They pick up their work, they do it themselves. I, the time that I spend on them is basically a little bit of time on the weekend to go over their books and see what they need to do for the week, write a list of, you know, you're gonna do this in science and this in math and this in language arts, etc. And then I check their work each evening and, you know, sometimes during the day I remind them, hey, you've got this going on today, make sure that you're working on your schoolwork and getting it done at a reasonable time. But really they do most of the work themselves. For the younger two, I'm still fairly hands-on with them. They're doing grades one and two. And so that is mostly me sitting down with them and going over lessons with them. My grade two um, is starting to work more independently and she's d done very good at that actually. She's starting to motivate herself to do her schoolwork, to get out her books, to read the instructions and do it herself. And then if she needs help, she comes to me and says, I don't understand this math problem or I don't know what this, you know, what this explanation of language arts means. And then, then I can sit down and help her. Honestly, still doing school with both of them probably takes maximum two hours in the morning. So usually I will do say math with my grade two and then math with my grade one and then reading with my grade two and then reading with my grade one and they get a break while their sister is doing school. And then yeah, in a couple hours, they're both done their school. They can run off and play and I can go do the housework or the writing or whatever I need to do for the day. So homeschooling is really um, it doesn't take a huge amount of time. I've also at times gotten an older child to help a younger child. Um, last week my grade 7 helped my grade 1 do her spelling, which was very cute because that day in spelling she was supposed to write a, a little sentence and so she wrote, I love my big sister. 
for her little sentence in her spelling book, which I thought was just adorable. It's it's great in this way. I guess this is another reason for homeschooling um, is that the relationship between the siblings uh, just is greatly improved. I find they get to spend this time together and to see each other much more. And so they have a great relationship. So if you do have a big family and older kids and you're worried about how much time it's going to be spent homeschooling them, then yeah, there's a few options there. The older kids work independently. The older kids can help the younger kids, which is good for them too, right? So they can um, learn by teaching their younger kids. Even for math, I have, you know, my grade six and my grade seven. So if my grade six daughter needs help and I'm busy with one of the younger students, sometimes my grade seven daughter can help her sister who's doing the math that she did last year, right? And so that's a good way to reinforce for my grade seven how to do this math. And they, they can work together on that. So yes, there's ways to fit it into a busy lifestyle and other things that you need to get done, including working. I know moms who homeschool and work full time and it's doable. It's, you know, maybe takes more juggling, prioritizing scheduling, but yeah, it does not need to be time consuming. What is homeschooling like in your province? So I live in BC and homeschooling is actually very supported here. We are very blessed to have government funding for our homeschool endeavors. There are two options here in BC for homeschoolers. The first is to register as a homeschool family with the government, which basically means that you tell the government that you plan to homeschool and they say, great, go do it. You don't get any funding in that case. Um, you also are not accountable to a teacher so you can do whatever you want in your homeschool and it's all up to you. The other option is to enroll as a homeschooler in which case you will receive government funding which is about $700 per student uh, right now. That changed a couple years ago and it varies a little bit depending on school boards and how they allocate your funding um, but you do get that funding and you do also get the support of a teacher and then you are accountable to that teacher. And again, that accountability varies a little bit depending on school boards. Some school boards want you to report weekly to your teacher and tell them what you're doing each week with your students. And some school boards require less reporting or different reporting. And so if you, um, like us, appreciate the funding for the books, that's a great option. If you appreciate having a homeschool teacher to bounce ideas off or to consult, there's been a few times when I've gone to my homeschool teacher and said, hey, we're struggling in math right now, or we're struggling in reading right now. What do you recommend for this? And it's just been great to have somebody else with a little bit of experience who can say, hey, why don't you try this? Or have you looked at this curriculum? Or just encourage me to keep going um, and it's also great I find to have that go between between me and the government because my homeschool teacher takes care of reporting what we're doing as homeschool students and you know I basically give her everything that we're doing and then they kind of turn it into what the government wants to see to make sure that we're on track each year and if you enroll as a homeschool student, I do believe that at the end of grade 12 your student will receive um, a BC diploma or a dogwood be provided by the school because the school has been keeping track of everything that you're doing. They have seen your child's work and so they can say, yes, you've completed all the work, you've earned this diploma or dogwood. Students who register would not receive that diploma or dogwood or would have to do other things in order to earn that. What about socialization? This is probably one of the biggest questions we get as homeschoolers. And I remember getting this way back as a homeschool student myself. We seem to be very concerned about our kids socializing and making friends and having a chance to hang out with other people. And I honestly think that homeschooling provides better opportunities for socialization than public schools do. My kids hang out with each other so they hang out with you know I have kids ages 13 to 3 and they all play with each other and entertain each other and I love seeing them hang out together when we get together with other families they're also hanging out in multi-age groups and so they have no problem playing with kids older than them kids younger than them they have no problem chatting with adults um, I found that when I'm hiring babysitters if I hire homeschool babysitters yeah they have no problem talking to me if I hire public school babysitters they tend to be a little bit quieter and it's harder to get them chatting because I feel like they're just not used to talking to people outside of their peer group. We've had some experiences with um, in school type situations where my kids have gotten bullied which was unfortunate and we were able to step back from those situations. 
So I feel like there is in schools a lot of negative socialization that happens with peer pressure and bullying. And because we're homeschoolers, we've been able to, for the most part, avoid that. Um, we do have a large circle of homeschool friends, so we can frequently hang out with other homeschoolers. Um, we do a lot of extracurricular activities. So my oldest daughter is in orchestra. My second daughter is in track and field. They have places like that in the community where they can hang out with friends. And this year we tried something a little bit different. We did a blended homeschool program where the girls went to school two days a week and were at home three days a week. And so for two days a week, they were hanging out in a classroom with other homeschoolers. And this was kind of a test to see, you know, do they like school? And also, is this a good way for them to make new friends and to have some social time? And at the end of the year, my second daughter, my grade six daughter said, I didn't make any friends at school. The one friend that she mostly hangs out with at school is a friend that she knows from before school because she's also a, a homeschooler that we've known for several years. And so I thought that was just an interesting note that overall school is maybe not the best place to make friends because the time that you spend at school is focused on schoolwork and there's limited time for really interactions where you're going to really get to know somebody else, right? They're eating lunch, they're playing a game at recess, they're doing this, it's always group situations, but I really feel like the places that you make friendships is one-on-one -on -one situations where you can really get to know somebody else and maybe talk and just have time to spend together. And so those opportunities for our children have come outside of school with other homeschoolers where we can just hang out for an afternoon at a playground and they can just sit on the swings and talk or come up with their own ideas for what they want to do. And so, yeah, I really feel like socialization has not been an issue for us and that because we homeschool, they've had more opportunities to socialize, to make friends and to hang out with other groups of people. What does your schedule or routine look like? So we try to stick to homeschooling in the mornings. I found that that generally works best. I usually wake up, I have my shower, eat breakfast, make my coffee. By then the kids are also up and I've probably reminded them a couple times to eat breakfast and to stop reading their book and that they have to start school. And then I will start school with my younger two and usually the older two follow suit. They know the routine, they'll, they'll start school as well. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll just kind of go back and forth between doing different subjects, maybe taking a little break. And school generally, you know, we can get it done by noonish. And then we have other activities in the afternoon. So whether that's a play date with friends or doing housework for me, hanging out for them, um, music lessons one afternoon a week, things like that, that can happen in the afternoon. And so, yeah, I've just found with the our kids that school works best when we get up and we get it out of the way first thing in the morning. And so that's how I tend to plan our day. And if we have a, a really busy morning, then it makes it harder to get school done in the afternoon. They're just not as focused and we all feel a bit scattered. So yeah, generally I reserve mornings for homeschool time and other activities I try to plan for the early afternoon. And for my part of homeschooling, I usually try to mark their schoolwork either in the evening when they have finished everything and then that gives me a chance to kind of go over the checklist and make sure that they have finished all their work. Um, sometimes I try to do it uh, late in the afternoon before I start prepping supper just to make sure that they've actually gotten everything done and maybe if somebody forgot to do language or spelling I can say hey you need to come back and do this subject you haven't gotten it to it yet. And then I try to do my homeschool planning for the week on Sunday afternoon. So that's just like really half an hour where I sit down and take a look at all of our books, my teacher's guides, stuff like that, and just write out a plan for the week, what we're going to do. And I find that that just helps us have a better start on Monday morning. Sometimes we have super busy weekends and I don't get it done on the weekend. And then it's, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I get it done on Monday morning. And the kids are like, what are we supposed to do for language? And I'm like, just a minute, I haven't looked at your language book yet. So... Yeah, I really find that if I if I take just a few minutes on the weekend and in the evenings to do the marking and the planning, then our weeks run a lot smoother. What is your style or curriculum choices? So if you read many homeschooling blogs, you'll see a lot of discussion about homeschooling styles and names like Charlotte Mason and Montessori and Eclectic and other things. I I don't know what our homeschooling style is. I guess I would say it's eclectic. We pick a little bit of everything. I've changed curriculums a little bit over the years um, to see what different things work for the kids. And for us, 
we kind of pick and choose a little bit. And I've kind of, you know, over the last, I guess it's six, seven years that we've been homeschooling, figured out the curriculum that works best for us. As I mentioned, I really like the solid Catholic curriculum that we found. So for most of our subjects, we use Catholic heritage curriculum. And for math, we use Saxon math. We've used that since kindergarten now for most of my kids. And for social studies, we use RC history or Roman Catholic history. They have a great um, program that spans um, ancient times to modern times from a Catholic perspective. We've used that also for several years. We've tried other curriculums in between, switched it up a little bit, um, you know, changed math curriculum once when it wasn't working, came back to Saxon math. Um, but overall, these are the core curriculum that I use and that I've found work for our family. Every once in a while, I look at other curriculums, read some reviews, look at what my friends are using, assess what we should be doing next year. But um, yeah, that's what I come back to. So I think once you find a good curriculum that works for your family, stick with it, right? If it's working, don't change it. And it is good to read reviews, get ideas from other people. You know, sometimes I, I do implement other things that I've seen. But yeah, we've got a good solid routine and good solid curriculum right now that I'm happy with. What do you do when there is a subject you don't know or don't like? This is another topic that comes up a lot because I know a lot of homeschool moms worry about like, I'm no good at math. How am I going to teach my kids math? And so I think the first thing that I do is learn with them. I, I don't like math. I didn't like math when I was a kid and um, I guess now I see its usefulness and the ways that I use it all the time so I don't mind it as much. So when one of my daughters um, comes to me with a math question, the first thing that I do is flip back to the lesson where they learned that. Um, I like Saxon math because under each problem question, under the number for each problem, they give the number for the lesson that this problem is, was taught. And so I can flip back to that lesson and I can either read through the lesson or just find an example and then say, hey, let's follow this example and do it the way that they showed you, which I hope is teaching my daughter's study skills. I constantly ask them, you know, when you ask me for help, did you flip back and look at the lesson? And they usually say, yes, yes, I did. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I can learn along with them. I can read the, the lesson, figure out the problem with them and and then they can they can do it from there, right? Um, sometimes I look at the answer key and work it backwards and help them with that. So there are those resources for me as the teacher. Same thing with science. Um, they're you know starting to get into grade six, seven science and technical things that you know I, I remember vaguely from my either university science or high school science myself. But it's things that I haven't done in like twenty years, right? So again, I read through the chapter with them if they have a question, right? They have they're like, I don't know what this definition is or where to find this, and I'm like, well, it's somewhere in the chapter, so let's read the chapter again, and see if we can find it. And so yeah, my first thing is to just try and learn with them. We have tried to outsource some things, so we did try other math programs where I wasn't involved, I didn't have to do the marking. Um, I found that that didn't work as well for various reasons for our kids, and so we came back to Saxon Math where, yeah, I can sit down and go through it with them and either use the textbook or the answer key to figure out what they need to know. As they get to higher level maths and sciences, we'll have to see what happens. It might be an area where, again, we look at online courses for them. Um, I've seen quite a few awesome online science courses that I would have no problem putting my daughters in. Um, my grade six did do a science course this year on anatomy, which is something my mom loves and something I don't know that much about. So that was one way for her to do um, something where, yeah, there was a fun teacher who made it interesting and exciting for her in ways that I can't. So that's always an option is to outsource either through online classes, and there are so many available to homeschoolers now, or through maybe community classes. Um, sometimes you can cross enroll with a school, so you could be doing most of your school work at, at home and some of your uh, school work at a school maybe, um, especially in high school. My brother did this in high school where he was homeschooling for most of his curriculum and then he went to our local high school just for German and math and maybe one science course I think so he was just there for the one or two courses that he was struggling with at home and that made a big difference for him so there are options if you don't know how to teach a subject or yeah you're not sure what to do in that area you can you can look around and, and there there are options to that i don't think that that's a reason to to not homeschool because especially today there are so many resources available for homeschoolers so many ways that you can still support your students in learning what they want to learn and helping them find resources 
And the last question, how do you find time for yourself or get a break? Yes, this is a big question because as homeschool moms, I'm pretty much around my kids. Well, it feels like 24 seven. I guess they do sleep a little bit. Uh, the older ones more than the younger ones. My littlest one is still waking up in the middle of the night, but yeah, it's, it's a full-time job. I'm with my kids all the time. And sometimes I, you, need, you need a break, right? And so I think it's really important as homeschool moms that we recognize that and that we do take care of ourselves. Um, the old airplane analogy, right? Put your mask on first. If you are feeling exhausted, stressed, tired, you're not going to be a good teacher. And so it's important to recognize what's going on in your life, what you're dealing with, and to sometimes give yourself grace and take a break. So we have taken extended breaks at different times. I had... Um, my fourth daughter was born in November. My fifth son was, or sorry, fifth child, only son was born in December. And so both of those times we took an extended homeschooling break. We made Christmas break a month or more long and I was able to focus on the new baby and to, you know, the, the older girls entertain themselves. They played, they kept themselves busy and we didn't worry about schoolwork until I'd settled into a good routine with the new baby. And then we picked up schoolwork again and kept going. I have a friend right now, she's in the middle of a big move. And so, yeah, they've taken an extended spring break because they're working on packing up the house and moving. And so I think it's good to recognize when there are circumstances like that in your life where, you know, maybe schooling needs to take a back seat for a little bit, but also recognize that the kids are learning other things, right? There's a new baby in the house. They're learning about new baby care or there's a move happening, right? They're working on organizing and cleaning and other things like that with you. These are, these are life experiences that are good for them. So don't feel like learning isn't happening simply because you're taking a break from the formal books. Um, on a smaller daily level, you know, take a break. I make myself a coffee twice a day and sit down and try to drink it while it's hot. Um, take time to pray. Uh, this is something that I'm still working on, but even 10 minutes to just step into your room Take a deep breath, have, you know, some time to pray, to read your Bible, something like that. That is good. Little breaks that you can build into your day. Um, we take all the breaks. We take spring break and Christmas break and summer break because by the time that, that time of that season arrives, I'm just as ready for the break as the kids are, right? And so they have two weeks where I'm not reminding them to do school and they can read their books and do their crafts and run around and play outside or whatever they want. And then by the time the break is done, we all feel refreshed and ready to come back again and jump back into schoolwork. And that's great. So yeah, there's, there's seasons, there's times, there's little breaks throughout the day that you can take. And I think it's important just to recognize that you need those. There's also, you know, on a weekly basis, getting together with another homeschool mom. So playdates are just as much for me as they are for my kids. We, you know, there's, I have a good friend, she homeschools. And so we often plan just to meet at the park and our kids run around and play for a couple of hours. And we talk as fast as we can about homeschooling and kids and what's going on in our lives. That's a break for all of us, right? The kids get some socialization. The moms get, you know, some time to, to chat and to get out of the house and to talk to another adult and um, that, that's really needed. Another option is, you know, in the evening, get your spouse to, you know, to watch the kids while you can get out for an evening, you know, with a friend or just go to a library, read for a bit, go to a coffee shop, read for a bit, stuff like that, right? Swap babysitting with a fellow homeschool mom so that you can get to an event you want to get to, or again, just have some time for yourself. So, it, it is important to find time for yourself to take a break. And sometimes it's, you have to be a bit creative to do that, but yeah, recognize it's important and, and figure out ways to do it. And so those are some ways over our homeschooling years that that has happened. Thanks for watching. I hope that I've managed to answer some of your homeschooling questions. And if I haven't, if you live in a different province, maybe um, do check out the links below for what some of my fellow homeschooling Canadian homeschool bloggers have to say about homeschooling in their province or in their home. Um, like I said, all homeschoolers are a little bit different. So maybe something that somebody else says will, I, you know, will inspire you or you'll be able to connect with them. And that's great. You can also drop by my blog, thekoalamom.com. I have tons of articles, curriculum reviews, tips, advice, things that have worked for us, things we've tried. Um, so feel free to go to thekoalamom.com and click on homeschooling in the, the menu bar at the top and just browse or type in search for a specific topic and see if I've written about it. Uh, all the best with your homeschooling journey.